Hey there everyone. One of my goals when starting this channel was to showcase the clothes worn by working people throughout history. And while I enjoy watching and learning about the clothing worn by royalty and wealthy people throughout history, recreating those clothes are not really something that I could see my rather practical self doing. I just, for me, it would feel like a waste of my time and fabric since I would have no use for them since, you know, my level of fancy is going to a doctor's appointment or the grocery store. With that in mind, I will be starting a multi-part series exploring the clothes worn by those who got dirty throughout history, starting with the World War II bad girls. In 1941, the United States would enter the Second World War. By July of 1942, two million men would leave agricultural jobs, either for better jobs or just other jobs. Ultimately, six million men would leave the agricultural workforce by the end of the war. Livestock and crops, of course, don't care about wars. They need to be tended to regardless of whatever mischief the humans are getting up to. The vacuum left by the men leaving for the war had to be filled. The Women's Land Army stepped in to help fill this void. Started during World War I, the British started the Women's Land Army, or WLA, with the U.S. quickly following their example. It was disbanded after the war until, in 1939, the British revived the program. The United States also revived their WLA program after joining the war, putting around 3 million women to work. Along with these women, other groups were put to work such as teenagers, immigrants, prisoners of war, and Japanese Americans from relocation camps. If that's not something that you have ever studied, you should definitely look into the uh, forcing of Japanese Americans into relocation camps during World War II. The land girls were largely middle and upper class, particularly young women who did not have agricultural backgrounds. Women who were living on farms already, they were expected to stay there, work the farms, and also likely train, actually not likely, they did work to train new agricultural workers. Racism in the southern U.S. was a significant issue for the WLA. Recruiters found that there was a lot of hostility towards recruiting white women to field jobs. The massive amount of food and textiles needed by the various militaries, plus the breakdown in re trade relationships between countries on opposite sides of the conflict, resulted in rationing for those back home. This obviously had a significant effect on food and clothing. Victory Gardens were one such result. Originally started like the WLA, during World War I, they reemerged during World War II. The U.S. government strongly encouraged citizens to start their own victory gardens to help reduce the effects of rationing and support their troops. By their peak in 1944, victory gardens in the U.S. accounted for 40% of all produce consumed in the U.S. While clothing in the U.S. was not rationed like it was in Britain, the war still brought changes. Metals commonly used in clothing were needed by the military for planes and weapons. Silk and rubber, due to poor relations with Japan, the main exporter, were basically impossible to get a hold of. Wool was needed for uniforms and blankets. Nylon was needed for parachutes and tents. Cotton and the recently invented rayon became the leading fabrics of this time. With France under German occupation, British and American fashion designers came to dominate the fashion scene in the 40s with styles that were fabric conscious and uniform-like. These designs were most noticeable in women's dresses where hemlines came just below the knees, shoulders were boxy, and waist snipped in. It also became the time where women in trousers were finally viewed for the most part, as culturally acceptable. 
While the US WLA didn't require uh, workers to wear a specific uniform, they did encourage them to wear overalls and a work shirt. As such, I will be making myself, at the very least, a pair of overalls, a blouse, undergarments, and a headscarf. Possibly some other projects if I get my act together. Anyway, more on each of those projects coming soon. Being roughly three million women, women, with a <laughs> and culturate culture. I can talk. And it, my word. Is Daddy getting tired of hearing me repeat myself over and over? I'm thinking maybe you should just lip sync my words. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my voice and your lips moving. <laughs>